Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Flying Cat Marketing Interview Series. Today I have Max Aden, who is the founder of HeyAd, a demand gen agency from Hanover and Germany for mid market and enterprise SaaS companies. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about why marketing should not focus on generating leads. So I'm pretty excited to talk about this today because it's uh, maybe controversial, but not really. Um, so, hey, Max, how's it going? Hey, Mira. Thanks for having me. I'm glad that I'm here. <laughs> Thanks for the invite. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to have you on and talk about this because it's pretty interesting because everywhere on LinkedIn, you see this argument. Let's stop focusing on leads. Leads doesn't tell the whole story. Leads don't tell the whole story. <laughs> Yet every time I sign on a new client and possibly you, I don't know how it is for you all the time, but the main goal they say is get more leads. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I think it's very interesting for us to talk about this, why getting leads should not be the goal. Um, so marketing has always been told that they're responsible for delivering leads to sales. Uh, but it does stop, uh, it's, it removes our responsibility for what happens after the leads get there. So why do you think that this model is broken? Yeah. So first of all, I would say it's an um, easy control metric. So leads, or contacts, leads, MQLs, whatever. How, it depends on how is this defined. But at the end of the day, it's easy to control for, for, from a marketing perspective. And uh, one of the biggest uh, issues from when you only focus on leads is that you don't have um, any marketing sales alignment because you only have what you already mentioned that you that you have all only the res responsibility for um, generating leads and you don't know um, yeah how much pipeline you generated so how much um, qualified ops you generated or how much revenue you generated because um, you think it's not um, your your responsibility to be aware of this so you only try to find ways to um, yeah achieve your monthly or um, annual goal and that's it so this is the first point <clears throat> yeah um you don't think that it could work backwards, for example, if you say, okay, sales, they know that they convert at this percentage on average. Uh, I know that the, like, I know that a, a lead converts to a customer at 10%, for example. And then I said, okay, if I just get them X amount of leads, then yeah, I would the, still be doing my job. Yeah. So the, the point is exactly this situation that the most um, companies don't know what is really working, you know? from this standpoint that you think of how much um, revenue we generated last year. And when we get back or report back from revenue to, to marketing sources, to marketing campaigns, um, so less companies really know it exactly uh, which marketing source is how much um, generating um, revenue or qualified yeah. ops. They don't know it. They don't, they don't know it, what's really working at the moment. So this is the main problem because they don't have a clear data structure in the CRM. Uh, some reason could be because they don't have a revenue ops manager. They don't really know to use uh, complex CRMs like Salesforce. This is called, could be also a part. And then um, to know where's your actual bias, you know, on a daily, uh, from daily perspective. So what, where they are, <laughs> where they are consuming informations and, uh, and how, <laughs> and if you think back, uh, the lead gen model comes from 2006 and now we have 2000, uh, 2022. So, and they still doing the same thing. So in this, if you think about it, it's really crazy because so many things changed. Think about, um, you have, for example, you have, um, in 2022, you have LinkedIn and in 2006, there was no LinkedIn. So think about 
what would you do in marketing when you don't have LinkedIn, for example? Or um, also, if you think about what is the actual things you are doing uh, in, in from the lead gen model, it is really, you know, sales driven, outbound, company centric activities. That means that you're doing more like email outreaches and that you collect information um, via, you know, ebook, white paper downloads. And this is comes all from sales activities, I would say, all from company centric activities, because this has nothing to do with how your potential buyers want to uh, consume information or maybe to want to explore uh, products. Also, you can't, um, you know, can't com really compare Google, for example, with, with LinkedIn, because it's not, uh, it doesn't work the same way. And it's also that the people on LinkedIn don't know your brand and don't know what you do. And on, on, uh, on Google, they are looking for directly for a solution. So this is the, for example, this is the, the main difference. And if you are aware of this, you have also execute different, um, your marketing activities. And most often more is less, you know, that you should focus on two to three activities rather, uh, to execute on 10 activities at the same time, because also one issue is, um, to have not a big, uh, marketing team to have not enough, um, capacities. And so you have to focus really clear on less activities because it's not helpful if you try to accomplish on every, um, platform something um over one year for example and you you don't know really what is working and what's not uh, and what's not so this is not helpful so yeah. to c come back to to the point i would say it's helpful that you trying to find out what's really working that you not have this focus on everything has to be measurable. So this is also something, um, come, came from the lead gen model. Everything has to be measurable and it's, you're saying everything you should not be measurable. Yeah, almost so, uh, from, from a demand perspective, it's not possible because the bias journey is so complex and the lead gen, sometimes I feel it feels like the lead gen uh, journey is like B2C e-commerce. If you try to sell some shoes, for example, for maybe for price $60. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Then the journey is maybe three touch points. And also most often the journey from a lead gen perspective is also four touch points, five touch points, but mid market enterprise products. Uh, it takes time to explore or explore products, to find your brand, to understand their, their own problems and to, um, see in your product, the, uh, the perfect solution. And then maybe also to be many times aware of your brand, of your product, and then to explore your product and to, uh, to create some buying intent. This is the thing. And this is the most, also the most uh, common thing that people think from one touch point that uh, specific, this touch point, for example, to download a white paper or ebook, they, the people think they have already uh, buying intent, but they don't ha have any mm -hmm. buying intent. It's the only thing you provide to get some information from your company, from your product. That's the, the, the problem. And if you think about it, it takes 40 to 80 touch points to create buying intent. And it's only possible around about, uh, six to 12 touch points in one month, uh, with your potential buyers, then have, you have to think about how long does it take to yeah. win a customer? So it takes six to 12 months to win a customer in a mid-market enterprise and not, uh, <laughs> two weeks. Yeah. No, it's interesting that you say that, especially the difference between the intent 
in each of the different channels. Um, we have to respect that social media is not an intent channel. <laughs> it's not an yeah. intent channel. It's just an awareness channel. Yeah. People aren't going on there shopping for, I'm going to make my next big B2B purchase. Let me see what I can find here. Mm -hmm. um, it's really that they're just there to learn. They're there to connect with people. So if we show up understanding that, then it makes a pretty big difference. But why is it so hard for businesses to understand that that's how the channels work and that's how buying behavior is today? Why are we still so focused on lead gen? Yeah, many, 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 many reasons. So you have the main metric from, from the company perspective where marketing is measured on. So MQLs, and if they don't want to change it, you can't change it from a marketing perspective. Then if you would do lead gen to generate sales qualified opportunities, you would fail. That's the next thing. <laughs> You can't do the same thing uh, to do to execute uh, the holistic demand generation marketing. You have to change your whole uh, company uh, structure and how you execute marketing. And also then marketing has to uh, speak with, with sales and the opposite. And also that you yeah respect the buyer's journey and that you think about who is you know, creating buying intent or creating net new deals. And this is can, can also, uh, all the, these things comes from marketing and not from, from sales that this is not that I want to say, uh, sales is not important, but in the, in the first point of view, you have to think about that marketing is doing this job of, uh, to put out informations, to educate the people, to, um, explain explain uh, what your product does and that um, through marketing you create buying intent especially mm -hmm. on non-intent channels like facebook like um, linkedin so it's different to yeah absolutely it's different to google because then you have a different option yeah looking directly for a solution but if you think about also that com communities and peers and also um, word of mouth is growing very fast and people trust more peers than, you know, Google something, then you have to think about the whole bias journey. So, and then, um, so let's talk yeah. about that. How does, how does creating content on LinkedIn and on Facebook and these awareness channels how can we get that to help influence word of mouth? Mm -hmm. It's the, 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 the biggest part is to educate your market to also one underrated point is the market, I would say the marketing basics. So for example, uh, to know really your target audience, to interview your customer, um, every, every month to, to every know month. really what is. Yeah, to, to know really your your people, you know, your, your market, because uh, this is something you, you can put out something, you know, uh, to, uh, yeah, to, to have something uh, um, dead in marketing, but this is not really helpful. So you, your messaging has to be aligned with what is really relevant, that you have to know uh, what is, what they care about in their daily business, you know, for example, and so this is not really coming from some um, that you go on Google Trends and, and then you see <laughs> the real answer. This is, is really coming from um, from real customer interviews that you know you, uh, where they are uh, when you put out informations. Uh, then also that you uh, think about um, what informations are really relevant and also um, in, uh, in relation to your product, um, how you can set, uh, solve some problems from your target audience. And this is something that most people don't really know or didn't create any persona or ICP. And this is the first point um, where you would fail because you don't really know what's really relevant. So product marketing would be very helpful in non intent channels and also educational content. So product marketing means, uh, speak about 
is specific about your product, about integrations, about use cases, uh, user centric um, content. This is very helpful. And it's about the consistent um, content that you put out every week, new content. And also it's about the whole marketing mix. It's not that a bias journey is all only, uh, you know, for, again, what I mentioned, um, one touch point. So only from, from Google or only from one content piece from LinkedIn, it's maybe one content piece from your LinkedIn company page on LinkedIn. Then, um, also maybe they, um, saw you, uh, you was mentioned in, in the Slack community. Um, maybe some peer uh, spoke about your brand or something like this. And this is many, many touch points. And it's about that you, um, think about how is it possible that your potential buyers see you as many, as uh, many often as, as possible, you know, and this is the, the first point I would say, this is where the most company fail because for example, they create an, a campaign for their target audience and they put it out and publish it. And then they leave it for four months, the same campaign. Same, yeah. Yeah. And this is not really helpful because if you think about the frequency, then the most people, uh, from the target audience saw this, this, uh, campaign minimum four times. And this is not how you educate consistent, your, your buyers and also to explain your maybe very complex product. It, it depends also on your product, on your market and so, but, um, at the end of the day, you have to do it because be aware of that. The, the most people again, don't know you. So, and this is the most underrated, uh, topic. So if I hear you, it's actually not just about how often people see you that they should see you as often as possible, but how many different ways you can tell them the message that they need to hear. Cause if they actually yeah. need to see the message over and over again, but in different ways of telling it. Yeah. Different campaigns, yeah. different creatives. It's, it's an opportunity to, that the, that they can see you and learn from you and, um, maybe also in the future, love you because you help them without, um, for example, this is also the difference between lead gen and, um, demand generation that you don't gate your content because you provide your information directly in the social media feed. This is what the actual, the most B2B buyers want. So, and you respect the whole buying behaviors. And this is, um, I would say in the future, they would thank you because they create buying intent and come back to you and lead gen is more like you come to the buyer and demand gen is the buyer comes to you and have a higher or have buying intent, have really interest in your product and they know what is your product about and how you can help them. And then sales also are more interested in these calls because, um, they have buying intent. They want to, to know more about your product. So the win rate is much more higher. And again, you don't create any buying intent. If you only have one or two touch points from a sign up for, from a online event or from a ebook white paper download, because it's not how people want to consume information. Mm -hmm. So you're not into the idea of strategic gating is it ungate a hundred percent yeah it's it's you know the the people staying on this track because they want to have everything measurable and this is why they gate their content and they uh, are they are afraid um of this idea that they can't uh, measure every touch point in the customer journey and this is the main problem that they are so, you know, they so driven by maybe also vendors and, um, Martech people and yeah, you know, Forrester that, and ABM tools and whatever is that they are thinking this is the best way. And we want to see everything in our attribution software, but what is the, the, the e easiest way to maybe, um, 
to have a middle way, find a middle way that that you put a free text field in your, your form. You ask for how do you hear about us? And also sales can ask everything what marketing wants. You know, this is something very obvious, but the most sales people I would say don't do it, that they asked for something what for marketing is really relevant. And then sales can report back to marketing. And also then they can, uh, marketing can think about in the future, how we can use it for our overall communication to the market. And this is something really easy that they also can ask um, how you find us, what do you Google, um, what was the last touch point, you know, and then you uh, get some so different answers if you compare it with your attribution software. Then the, the people say, yeah, the first touch point, I, I break it a little bit down. So the first touch point was LinkedIn content piece. And then I went to your website, then I saw your um, Facebook ad. Then uh, again, I saw something on, on, on LinkedIn. Maybe then I listened to your podcast. Then I come back to the website and then I ask for a demo. Yeah. So, and this is what you never, this is something what you never can measure uh, with your, with any software in the world. And, but, but you the, do, I know that you use attribution software. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what's the point of that then? Then to get a sense of what's working and um, it's not only attribution software to use Google Analytics to use the self attribution that you use the free text field in your demo form and then also to um, go in the CRM, get an overview of touch points and then also um, speak with sales. And this is um, then with all these touch points, touch points, you see what's really working. But at the end of the day, you have to, every time you have to report back from revenue, revenue to marketing sources, to, to marketing campaigns. And then if you uh, split your different marketing sources and not to see it as a blended funnel, then you see what's really working. And this is where, where the most marketing departments, um, yeah, don't have really an overview because they only um, are driven by, oh, how we can generating more MQLs and they are not really interested at all that they know, okay, how much ops, ops we generated, you know, and this is something you don't know it. And um, also maybe they don't have the expertise to, to do it um, and not the right people to, to do it. So, yeah. Wait, so when you say that marketing teams were focused on the blended funnel versus mm -hmm. the siloed funnels, I, mm -hmm. it's, you're saying it's better to look at the silo at the sources individually, even though yeah, you have to, to the split journey it. is yeah. complex and there's a bunch of touch points and they could have touched yeah. on every single one of those parts. So I would say the, the most companies have not, you know, 20 marketing channels, um, how you, um, generating more pipeline, it's most often at least five channels. So, and, um, if you only think about your MRR or ARR and that you say, okay, it's maybe it comes from inbound and outbound, but what is really working? This is, would be my question, you know, and if you only see it from a blended, uh, funnels perspective, you don't know it, you yeah. don't know what's, what's working. And uh, it's not really relevant, uh, if you generating, uh, 450 MQLs, uh, last month, because if you think about the win rate from a lead gen ebook downloader to customer, it's only around about 2%. So it's so bad. And the. Uh, CAC payback time period is something about three to five years. So if you know this, you wouldn't execute this at all anymore. <laughs> yeah. But you don't know it. You don't know it. You, we are so data driven because we use ABM tools and attribution software and so many other tools and customer insight tools. But, um, yeah, software is more used than, you know, that we speak in person with potential buyers, with existing customers, with your whole market to know what's really working and also to go back, I would say, to the marketing basics because maybe also the last update on your ICP 
buying Persona is five years ago. So we do want to be data driven, but we also mm -hmm. don't want to be overly data driven. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in our last few minutes, I just wanted to talk about customer centricity, which is something that you've mentioned a lot of times, mm -hmm. um, making the buying journey more customer centric, not cus company centric. And by that, I understand that you mean don't talk about the company over and over again, yet you do want yeah. to talk about the product a lot. Mm -hmm. Can you help me just define how do we talk about the product? How do we do product marketing uh, and talk about our product a lot mm -hmm. and educate people about our product without being too company centric? Yeah. So the fir uh, I would um, first um, say something different to customer centricity because you can 3x your pipeline very easy if you really focus on customer centricity. And that means that you should, you know, optimize your overall um, conversion. And that means that you make it really easy to, for example, book a meeting with sales if they are ready to buy. And this is something it's uh, in a lot of companies, if you go on the website and you want to book a demo, it's very hard to, to book a demo. Maybe then you have some back and forth uh, via email to, to book a meeting or to find a good appointment. And this is so annoying, you know, this is not very really customer centric. And this is the first point I would, uh, I would change. Think about what is really important for your customer. Put you, yourself in your customer shoes or think about how you explore your last product or you, you bought uh, the, the last product. And this is, I'm very sure that this was not, uh, on a, you know, via ebook download or something like this. So mm -hmm. this would be the first point. It's so, so easy and it's so, so um, helpful. And then customer centricity means also that what I also mentioned is the overall, you know, that respecting of the consumer behaviors. And that means that you have to providing information in the social media feed and not to link to third party content or here's our blog post. Think about what, what they want to know from you, why they should explore us and how we can solve the, the problem from our target audience. And that is that you speak about product functions, integrations, um, about, um, some reference case studies, uh, user centric, um, uh, content, for example, this is all in product marketing and um, also this could be also some content pieces that you speak about some topics they, um, you know, spoke about in some communities or leave some comments under your content or something. You can also use it. It's, it's not so complicated. It's, it's, it's that you think about what they want from, from me or not the opposite. Yeah. It's all the time, okay, what, how we can get some information as, as quick as we can from, from our um, potential buyers. Yeah. And yeah, this is, um, if you change this mindset on, on the overall execution for marketing, then it's, it's really different. And then also educational content uh, for, for, for me, for my agency, for example, it could be, what is the difference between, difference between lead generation and demand generation? And I don't mention any time my company, my agency service, I speak only about this topic because I know, because I speak every week with different marketers from Germany and from the US. I know that this, this topic, for example, is so important for my target audience. Yeah. And this, I, I only know it because I speak to my audience in person. I don't look at some customer insights tool and Martech and whatever it's about that you speak with your target audience could be also directly on direct messages on LinkedIn could be also on zoom calls or whatever, or listen to, or to do some podcast interviews. A lot of people yeah. have already a podcast. So yeah, that's the point. So that you think how we can help them or not or not, uh, and not, how we, uh, can help how we can help us. Yeah. <laughs> Love Damn, X. Yeah. This has been a very 
enlightening conversation. It's something that I agree with a lot. Uh, I hope that for those who don't think this way yet, that something maybe has clicked in listening to this episode because it's really important to to think this way, to think more about the customer. There's just too much competition out there to not do that today. So thanks for your time. Uh, yeah, for those who too. are for those who are listening or watching, uh, please follow Max. Where's the best place to connect with you? LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn is the best place. And if you speak German, then you can also listen to our podcast. German speakers listen to the podcast. What is the podcast called? Der B2B SaaS Marketing Podcast. Hey, I'm not going to try to repeat it. So hopefully yeah. you got that. Um, if you liked this episode, please give it a like, leave a comment below. Let us know you listened to it. Let us know what you thought about it. If it changed your mind about anything. Uh, and subscribe. And thank you, Max. I will see you next time. Yeah, thank you too. And that's the end of the podcast right there. Hope you enjoyed the episode, but please don't go just yet. If you did enjoy this episode, please leave us a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It'll help other people like you discover us and get the same insights, and it would really help us out a lot. Um, Thank you for being a loyal flying cat and for listening. See you next time.